silence spiritual attacks in your life. Alan DiDio reveals strategies on how to be armed for victory and win the spiritual battles you're facing. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, do you feel like you are living in a consistent state of chaos and are you struggling with overcoming spiritual attack after spiritual attack? Well, today our special guest has got some insight for you that could turn around the atmosphere you're dealing with. But first joining me around the table is Latricia Willis. How are you? I am doing great and I just cannot wait to talk about what we're going to talk about today. The weapons that need to be formed, the weapons that need to be yeah. just, I mean, used yeah. in yeah. certain, you know. Yeah. Because we're in a <laughs> battle. Just get in a battle, there. yes. yes. We I'm are. excited. Yes. Anna Kendall, how are you? The battle is raging <laughs> and evil abounds, but people of God hear the victory sounds. Okay. Right? Good. <laughs> yeah. Is that a song or? I, it's one of mine. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Anna loves to sing a song. She has so many great songs. Dorothy Newton, how are you? And how's the new grandbaby girl? I'm doing good. She's wonderful. She looks just like me, growing oh. every single day. I bet she's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Hey, April Simons, how hey, are you? I'm doing great. Glad to be on this side. I know. Usually you're over I'm here, here and I can't reach yeah. you, but now I can keep you in, in line yeah. and stuff, right? So, yeah. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good, and I was thinking I want to be armed and dangerous. Mm, there you, you go. Do. To yeah. the enemy. We are armed and dangerous yes. with the power of the Holy Absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely. Well, he is a pastor and author, and he's here to share about how you can be armed for victory. Please welcome Pastor Alan DiDio. Hello, ladies. Hello. You did good with my name, actually. That's an Italian name. <laughs> yeah, you did good with it. You couldn't be Alan Smith today. No. The deal. No. Okay. So what does it mean to be armed for victory, and are we missing some spiritual weapons in our arsenal? Well, before we find out the answers to those questions, I want to go back to the beginning and really find out how you came to know the Lord, because you talk about the fact that you were an atheist. Mm. Can you believe being an atheist at 17, Anna? No, I can't. I've been reading Eric uh, Metaxas' book on oh, yeah. atheism. It's very interesting. Yes, it so is. you were an atheist. Yes. What I came to realize is that there's honestly no such thing as an atheist. Yes. Uh -huh. Because they all know deep down inside that there is a God. Yes. But I convinced myself okay, that, makes yeah. that sense. I was an atheist because I'd been around so many Christians. And people say, what are you talking about? How sad I'm talking about Christian atheists, where these are people who say they believe in God, but they live their life like he doesn't exist exist. Right. Right. And when you're surrounded by that, you say, you know what, if, if Christianity is not supernatural, it's superficial. Yeah. This can't be right. This can't be real. So you did not see authenticity in some right. of the Christians that surrounded you. Obviously, there's a lot of amazing yeah. people that live and walk, yeah. you know, yes. in line with the Word of God, and they, they live it out, they walk it out. It's so important that we do mm -hmm. that. Was there anybody that you saw in that realm that just you know, it's rare. I mean, that's why you got to find your tribe. When you find something like Daystar, mm -hmm. you need to connect with it and partner with it because it right. is unique. I mean, we think we're around each other. We found our yeah. tribe. Right. Mm -hmm. But for those people who haven't, who are still out there, for some of them, Daystar is their only connection yeah. mm -hmm. with real, genuine, spirit-filled Christianity. That's and that's why we're so thankful for what you're wow. doing. Okay, so at some point, you, um, at 17, well, even before then, you had experienced a lot of maybe trauma from all the moves you made, divorce in your family. Yeah. And so tell us what, what was going on there. I had been in jail a couple of times. I had moved 18 times by the time I was 18 years what of age. What were you in jail for? Well, let's see. Okay. Which time? Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, one was for public intoxication. Yeah. I was in jail for public intoxication at, seven, at 16 years of age. Yeah. And another time I was in jail for uh, failure to stop for the blue lights. So there was a, there was a big uh, uh, Dukes of Hazard car chase. No! And oh my big roadblock. You can't outrun the radio, I learned very quickly. Wow. Wow. So you, how long were you in jail for that? It was just overnight. Yeah. But at 16 years of age, big deal. when you're in one small cell with 15 other people who have oh, done worse. major things, oh far worse yeah. things, it's, it's kind of a wake-up call. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so there you are, 17. You've got a lot of stuff going on in your life, but you don't know the Lord. 
Yeah. And so you, you have an emptiness. So you start looking for answers in what? In New Age, witchcraft, Wiccan, paganism, wow. Hinduism. I looked into all of those things and they were all just empty and void. Mm -hmm. There's always that initial shine, you know, when you're right, finding yeah. something new. There's new language and it's kind of exciting to begin with, but it's just empty and I wanted something real, something tangible. So I just threw my hands up and said, it must not be out there. And that's why I said, well, I'm just gonna be an atheist. Okay, but then hmm. you were invited to church. Yeah, never underestimate the power of inviting somebody to church. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're 17 yeah. and there's cute girls there. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I want to say this to everybody who, who's watching. No matter how far gone your loved one may be, mm -hmm. could be a spouse, mm -hmm. could be a sibling, a parent, or a child, they're not too far yes. Yes. for God to reach them. Amen. Yeah. And I'm living proof of that. Yeah. I went into this youth meeting where there was all kinds of partying going on. They were having a pizza party. And I thought, well, free food and girls, I'll go. <laughs> 17 years of age. And I walk in and there's this cloud of oppression around my life. And I could hear this voice in my head saying, you don't believe in any of this. You don't believe in God. Get out of here. So I went and sat down in the corners. Everybody's having a good time. And I, I'm sitting there and I have this dramatic encounter, mm -hmm. which is why we call our ministry Encounter Ministries. I had this encounter mm -hmm. where I felt as though I was sucked into a tunnel or underwater where I could hear the sound around me, but I couldn't distinguish the voices. I could see people's mouths moving, mm -hmm. but I couldn't hear what they were saying. All I could hear was that voice that was inside my head, but now it's audible. Yeah. And I could hear it saying, you don't believe in God. Get out of here. Well, you don't need to be here. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God in that moment, it's, it's amazing how you can drop a lifetime of revelation in a second yes, in your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's as if, like on Wizard of Oz, when he pulled the curtain back and you saw who was really doing the talking. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people right now who think they're controlling their life, that they're controlling their thought life, that they're really smart, and they don't realize they're being dominated by demon power. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, the Spirit of God revealed that to me. And I said, Satan, you can't have me anymore. Jesus, I'm all yours. Wow. And just like that, mm. just like that, I was transformed into a wow, new creature. Super. And that can happen for your family members Absolutely. too. All of you watching, that can happen in an instant. And we're gonna believe God for that to happen yeah. in Jesus. So it's name. almost like there was like a cloud over yes. you and surrounding you. and. The Holy Spirit cleared it out for you to be able to see clearly. And the closer I got to Christianity, the darker the cloud became. Wow. Really? So the, wow. the more the enemy, so one thing the Lord revealed to me about the voice I was hearing was how weak it was and how desperate it was. Mm -hmm. And as I got closer to real Holy Ghost people, mm -hmm. people who really loved the Lord, had a genuine relationship, the intensity of that spiritual attack increased. That's mm -hmm. why you can't look at the outward appearances, yes. that when you start mm -hmm. praying for someone or you bring them to church, then they just flip out, you know, and that weekend they do, do something crazy. Mm -hmm. Don't be moved by that, because what's happening in them is greater than what you saw happen to them in church. Yes. So trust in the Lord and what He's doing. Well, you know, Amen. also I think we don't really think about how powerful the name of Jesus yeah. is. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, demons tremble yes. at that name. Yes. There's power yes. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And just to whisper that name mm -hmm. um, is the powerful thing. Mm. Well, there's something about opening your mouth and releasing that name. Yes. And I feel like people need to do that right now mm -hmm. and begin to say the name of Jesus. Jesus. You've been dominated maybe with thoughts of depression or anxiety. I dare yeah. you mm -hmm. to speak the name of Jesus in this moment and watch it dissipate immediately. Then call us to let us know wow. what's going on in your yeah, life. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And people that are watching right now, right before we get into the book, that don't even know Jesus. And you, like you've mm -hmm. heard his name used like in cursing. You know, you've, you've, you've heard about him, but you don't know him. Right. I mean, you have to understand that that's really the most important decision that you'll ever make is to invite Jesus into your heart and your life. And he will dispel all that darkness yeah. out, of your, yeah. out of your life. He'll set you free. Mm -hmm. He will transform your life. He will give you a new heart. And how do people do that if they're watching right now and don't know how to do it? I think one of the reasons the Lord gave me this experience is so I could sit here and tell you, He's real. Mm -hmm. He's real. And all you have to do, now listen to how theological this prayer was. I said, Satan, you can't have me anymore. Jesus, I'm all yours. That's all you have you to do. You just said, Jesus, I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Now, it's yeah, good if you yours. can say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You forgive me. Come into my heart. I repent. Yeah, th those are all prayers we prayed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I'm just telling you, and my grandfather just prayed, 
God, if you're there, mm -hmm. right. yeah. I need you. You know what was key? After I did that, I broke down. I mean, I'm crying in the corner of this party. Uh -huh. I felt that I had to tell everyone. I was a very private person, introverted. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to tell everyone. I didn't know the Bible says, with the heart you believe and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Yes. So I, I got everyone's attention and I told them what happened. And the moment I told them, an even greater breakthrough took place right. where I was set free. You, right. need to, you need to call us and let yes. us know that something's happening in your life, that you're giving your life to Jesus. The moment you tell someone, things change dramatically. Weights fall off of you, you didn't yes. even know you had. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we're made, the Bible says we're made overcomers yes. by the word of yes. our testimony. Yes. Yes. So when you, we testify of the goodness of God and what he's done for us, or if you, know, you pray that prayer and you say, you know what, I'm gonna share it, it, it really empowers us. Why does that happen? Well, I think God's looking for agreement. You know, he's looking for agreement in the earth. He asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? Well, did he forget who he was? Did he have amnesia? <laughs> no, he knew who he was. He wanted to see if they knew they who knew. he was. Yes. Yes. And so it doesn't matter who we think he is. What matters is who do we say he is? Mm -hmm. Who do we declare him to be? And he will be to you yes. who you say that he is. So even if you're already saved, declare him as your healer. Amen. Declare him as your deliverer, as your and Lord. he will be there as your yes. Lord. Yes. Yes. Oh, we need more of that. So yes. what happened when you shared it with the people that were there that night? Well, there was a mini revival that took place. A lot of teens who were kind of far away from God, when they saw me get saved, this was like, you They're know, like, a sign this from This is him. a miracle yeah. of all miracles. <laughs> Seriously. This guy, and, and it really is the greatest miracle, and that's why a lot of people just have such mixed up theology, and they're like, well... I'll go to church when I straighten out this part oh of my, my life or yes, yes. I'll come to God when I deal with it. No, no, the problem is you've been trying to deal with all that stuff. Yes. You come to him as you are. Mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of things are hanging off of you. I don't care what kind of addictions are going on. I don't care about what sins you've committed. You come to him just yes. as you are and mm -hmm. you let him do that supernatural work in your life. What kind of things did he set you free from like immediately? Well, first of all, imagine saying, before, before I take a shower, I need to clean up. That's, yeah. that's not how it works. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's people good. say that Christianity is a crutch. It's not a crutch, it's a hospital. Yes. It's a hospital. And the moment I had addictions, I had bondages, I already told you what I was in jail for, things I was battling with that were instantly changed. And here's what happened. My appetite changed. Yeah. The wow. things I desired changed. Yes. The Lord began to put desires in me that were now healthy. You know, God's not trying to keep mm -hmm. you from having a good time. Right. Yeah. He's trying to keep us from destroying ourselves. Yes. Yeah. But if we just trust in him and make him Lord of our lives, yeah. he just starts removing chains and barriers and weights and oppressions that we've just learned to live with. Yeah. Yeah. But he'll take them off. And that's what happened to me. Okay, so um, fast forward, you did meet your lovely wife. Yes. And have lovely children. I do have lovely children. <laughs> okay, so just quickly give us that. Okay. And we'll talk about the book. So my wife, Tara, the most amazing woman in the world, makes the best sweet tea you could ever possibly have. <laughs> if you live in the yeah. South, you understand what sweet if you tea don't, is. If yes. you don't, then that's fine. You just come she to our house and we'll show friends. you what it's all about. <laughs> We're friends already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sweet tea? Yeah. Sweet tea makes good friends. Yes. Yes. I mean, I want my straw to stand up in the middle of the oh, sweet tea. You know what I'm talking about? Sweet tea and fried chicken. <laughs> and yeah. fried chicken. Yeah. She said she gave up on fried chicken. And I'm still praying. Let's believe God together right now. She made the tea and I will fry the chicken. Okay, deal. You're invited. And so we've got two amazing children. My son, Evan, who's 19, he runs our media at our ministry. Okay. And he's really on the cutting edge of digital media and like you guys are. Mm -hmm. And and he's amazing. And then my daughter, Alana, she's 14 and she's the boss, you know. <laughs> and she's amazing. She's about to get her black belt at 14 years oh, wow, of age. That's she's amazing. dangerous. I have the bruises <laughs> to prove it. But wow. she's okay, a lot of fun. Okay, so let's talk about the book. Why Armed for Victory? Why, why did this resonate with you so strongly? Well, I worked in a prayer center for many years, like the prayer center you guys have here, and I have such a passion for that. I prayed for more than 100,000 people one-on-one. -on -one wow. In my time working just in that prayer center. And I saw things work for some people and didn't work for others. And I began to recognize that a lot of Christians are losing their battles, not because they're not faithful, not because they're not fighting, not because they don't have faith. They're just using the wrong weapon. Yeah. yeah. And so as we entered into this enormous season of warfare that we're in as a, as a country and around the world, the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to open my armory and I'm going to release weapons that haven't been seen in generations. And he began to lay out some of those weapons for me and I put them, put them in the book and they're going to transform people's lives. We want to hear about it. Yes, we yes. do. <laughs> well, Dr. Lester Summerall said there's much to be gained by a return to the discarded values of the past. Mm -hmm. So not all of the weapons are shiny new. Some of them are just things that we've forgotten about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say this first. One of the key weapons, he showed me Goliath's sword. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And we want to talk about a new weapon. Mm-hmm. David killed Goliath, not with a stone. That's the Sunday school lesson. Mm-hmm. After he hit him with the stone, he took Goliath's own sword. Yes. So, and which was advanced technology, the Bible says. So the Bible says that David used enemy technology to destroy the enemy. That's Look at good. what Daystar is doing right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So God is calling us to take the weapons, the gallows that Haman built. Right, we're not yeah. going to get rid of these. No. So okay. let's redeem them. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's Goliath's good. sword. And he yeah. showed me that many believers say, well, I'm not, a, I'm not a social, you know, I'm not a digital kind of person or a phone kind of person. God didn't ask you what you liked and what you didn't like. <laughs> this is a weapon. If you're not already sharing Daystar stuff, mm-hmm. you need to consider it a mission, an evangelistic mission, that whenever something touches you, you share it immediately yeah. because this is a weapon in the hands of God. Mm-hmm. So good. There's a whole chapter on that. Okay, so, so go good. through the weapons. You want to hear about the weapons, Cindy? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. So the first weapon. Weapon is <laughs> the sword, the sword, Goliath's but, sword. But that was the enemy's right weapon. So a lot of times we think these things. I mean, they used to say television was a sin. That's oh, exactly yes. right. Now here we are, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> preaching the gospel all over the world through television. But what were some of the other weapons? Well, here's another one that um, Watchman Nee. I'm sure you're familiar with yes. Watchman yes. Nee. Yes. Arrested for his faith, died in prison because of his faith. He called it the avenging prayer that many believers sit back and hope and wait on God to bring justice to their lives. And what we don't realize is God's expecting us Mm -hmm. to pray a prayer of vengeance, not against people, Mm -hmm. but against our spiritual foe. And when you go through the book of Psalms, uh, you'll see these prayers all all over the place. And God gets on those prayers. In fact, Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? And he was talking about that woman who was pleading for vengeance Mm -hmm. from the judge. God is looking for some people to pray for vengeance. So I go through how to pray the avenging prayer. You say, how often should I pray it? How often have you been attacked by the devil? Yeah. How you do need to be pray praying it? for What's restitution. Like? What's a, mm-hmm. a... Well, when you go through David's Psalms and he begins to pray, he says, you know, cut them down at the knees, yes. you know, make them eat grass, these kinds of things. You take those prayers and you never apply them to people because God's all about redeeming people. Mm-hmm. But you speak to the spirit behind That's the right. people. This is not flesh and blood. Yeah. Not flesh the and Bible blood. The Bible says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Yes. Yeah. But against principalities Empires. and powers of darkness. Yes. And people are like, oh, I don't believe in all that. Well, you should yeah. believe in it yeah. because mm-hmm. you see so many things that are being propelled and pitch to the world right now have a direct connection Mm -hmm. to darkness and it's so clear to see that but we have eyes that cannot see into that realm yeah Yeah. exactly but there is a battle going on good against evil yeah it makes me think of and maybe this is part of it you can let us know but where the angels were fighting over daniel Mm -hmm. you know the prince of persia there was the warfare going on so i think that maybe it's what i'm kind of seeing that you're saying yes. that it's those principalities we have to. And what did the angel say? I've come because of your words. Right. I've come for your words. But I got stopped. <laughs> but yeah. I got hindered. And I, I had to stopped. go back and get some more to so help me. So what if me. David had given up 20, <laughs> yeah. you know, 20 days into his prayer? Yeah. What if he had given up? Yeah, he would have right. never seen the answer. Mm-hmm. So we got to make sure that we're, we're pressing in and we're mm-hmm. demanding for restitution for what the enemy has stolen for us. Yeah. And when we do that, God will release it into our lives. I think sometimes we do give up. You know, we get to this point and we just say, well, I guess it's not going to happen. There's a quote by Billy Graham that says, heaven is filled with answers to prayers for which no one even bothered to ask. Yes. Mm. And, you know, the scripture says, ask and keep on asking, knock and Mm -hmm. keep on knocking. We just got to have that spiritual fortitude to yes. keep on asking God. We've lost our fighting spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we've just kind of resigned to, well, if the Lord wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. It's exactly. starting to come back, though. Exactly. It is. It like, is. there yes. is a remnant that's yeah. rising up saying, okay, this is enough. And they're yeah. just like, right. standing yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because a, a lot of the church has been asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Until recently. Yes. yes. And we're starting to wake up with everything going on around us. We found that even agnostics and atheists, who I love talking to and ministering to, they're looking around the world and saying, okay, this is not natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. not normal. This is, super, this is pure mm-hmm. evil, what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're waking up to these realities. So we need to be able to give them an answer mm-hmm. for the hope that lies within us Amen. and yes. some tools to fight in this evil day. Yes. Um, in your book, you use the concept about militant worship. Yes. What is that? What is the characteristics? It sounds... That's you when know, you stand that? up on the table <laughs> and worship. Well, and you march. Is that one not of the weapons? The, table. the uh, militant worship is one of the weapons. And I go through the chapter to talk about this and it, it's it's something that we've lost almost entirely we think worship is like a therapeutic session where and it and it can be there are different kinds oh, of worship yes, yeah. yeah and it, it it is absolutely that but it is not only that mm-hmm. so there are times of quiet 
but then there are times of warfare. Mm. Militant worship is like the Syrophoenician woman who went to the Lord and the Lord answered her not a word. And she presses in again. And then he calls her a dog. And she says, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from them. I mean, she is True. pressing militant worship. Bartimaeus, militant worship is right. going to cry even the louder when the religious disciples right. or tell the him woman that. who had the issue of blood pressing Press through the crowd, pressing through the crowd. She didn't care. Yes. She said, "If I can just yes. touch yes. the hem of his garment, I'll be healed." Yes, that's yes. militant. Militant yes. worship Ooh. is you recognize that there are forces around you trying to keep you out of the presence of God. Within you, there are doubts that are trying to keep you from yeah. the presence of God, and so you press militantly yes. in. Yes. Most yes. people ruin their prayer life because they can't get past the struggle that they have. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. feeling it or they've got all these concerns or anxieties. So I show you how to press through that, yeah. all that sh warfare right. with militant worship. You know, I think we would be shocked if for a moment we could see into the spirit realm yeah. yes. and see the battle that's going mm -hmm. on, even mm -hmm. the, the heavenly host and angels that God has sin on the earth to yes, help us in absolutely. times of trouble. Yeah. Like if we could really see how many times God has oh, saved us. Oh, how many goodness. times have, I, have you said, I'll be in the car and I'll go, oh, thank you God yeah. for that angel. It yeah. had to be an angel. Yeah, exactly. no, there have been times I'm driving my car and I did not see, yeah. there was a blind spot mm -hmm. and I start to go and then I see it and I'm just mm. like, thank you Lord. Yeah, I mean, yes. there. We would be shocked, wouldn't we, if we could see yeah. into that realm what's going on right and now. And we need to thank the Lord for the things we can't see. Absolutely. Thankfulness yeah. multiplies the gift that it yeah. acknowledges. Mm, that's good. And one of the reasons why we live in defeat is because we're not thankful. Is that another weapon? Well, it should be if it's not okay. in there. <laughs> okay. We're going to do an amendment that's right for, now. That's, I'm gonna, the I'm add it. that's the next Part book. two. Anna? Rearm for victory. Yeah. Thankfulness is number one. You mentioned spiritual pacifism. So yes. how would you talk about that? Is that people who don't realize they have weapons or is it... Just people who've gone to sleep or what? So that comes from an, I'm, I love reading old books. Yes. Old, old books. And there's a gentleman named Hudson Maxim who was an inventor before the First World War. He was admired by Thomas Edison. And he wrote a book called Defenseless America that's more than 100 years old. Wow. And he was trying to wake America up and say there's a war coming. And so many people were just, they thought he was just trying to get money or whatever. And he said, passivism has ringed the nose of the American people wow. and is leading them blind and unknowing to the slaughter. And as I read that, the Spirit of God said to me, passivism has ringed the nose That's of the American true. church. We're just war weary. Yeah. You know, we're just tired yes. of fighting. Yes. But listen, it's time to get your fight back. But yeah. you know what? We, like, when you say that, I just think about how spoiled we are. I think are. about mm -hmm. other parts of the world where people give their lives right. for serving Jesus, oh, yes, or they're yeah. put in prison, mm -hmm. right. or they're denied certain rights, or mm -hmm. they've suffered injustice, or had family members killed. And, and they keep pressing through. Yeah. And we've got, we to, we got to get some backbone yeah. here, mm -hmm. Latricia. Amen. Well, I just, I want to touch on the fact that once he, he touched you, that you, everything just fell in alignment. You say you start making better grades, you start this yes. and that, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. well, There's believers out there that just want to, they, they want to press in, but they don't know what weapons to use. Yeah. So this is such a blessing. Well, the first thing is when God shows up, what's wrong becomes right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's just the best way to describe what happens yeah, when God shows good. up. Whatever's wrong gets aligned and becomes right. But what happens is there's an awareness that's coming. And that's, what, that's yeah. one of the main things. You know, people who are, who are involved in self-defense, let's say if you're in a room with someone with a gun, a knife, or unarmed, but they're aware of their surroundings. The one who's aware mm -hmm. is the most prepared and is more likely to be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. That's true. So the church has got to be, have a warfare awareness. Mm -hmm. They need to know what's going on around them. And that's what we kind of break out, break, mm -hmm. break down yeah. mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I'd love for you just to take a moment, because you mentioned this earlier, but for people who are watching that you have a lot of issues going on in your life right now, but some of you are really believing for certain family members and people that are close to you to really come into a knowledge of knowing the Lord and you really want to see God transform their life and maybe God's done a lot in your life and you want to see that happen. You don't really know how to talk to them about it, but just encourage them because I know you believe that we're coming into a season that God is supernaturally going to reveal himself to people in a way yes. that he never has before. Well, he's no respecter of persons. Hmm. Now listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is alive and he loves you. He wants to move in your life. 
And this is an opportunity right now. It doesn't matter what your theological background is, church background. It doesn't matter if you know anything about the Bible. I didn't know. I thought the red letters were the words of the devil. I thought the ribbon was the handle. I didn't know anything about the Bible. All I knew is I didn't want Satan dominating my life. And I want to pray for you right now. If you'll pray this with me, I believe you're going to see a breakthrough in your life. Pray this right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I submit myself to you. I submit myself to you. Satan. Satan. You can't have me anymore. You can't have me anymore. Jesus. Jesus. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Now just lift your hands and thank him. Mm, yes. Thank him for coming into your life. And I pray over you now that the blessing of the Lord would be yours, that what's wrong would become right in the presence of God. And in Jesus' name, we break every oppression off of you. We declare freedom over your life right now. And here's what you have to do. With the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made to salvation. You need to call right now. Call that number and let us know that you prayed that prayer with us. And what about those that are just struggling with family members who are lost and, and in trouble and just a mess? Encourage them as well. It's time to get your praise back. It's time to get your fight back. Don't get war weary. In Jesus' name, I speak a spirit of might into you. Amen. You will not grow weary. You. you will not get tired and frustrated. Receive the strength from heaven now in Jesus' name. Yes. And I believe you and your house shall be saved. Now just begin to praise him like a crazy person yes. as if it's already done. Yes. Yes. And you're going to see it happen in your Amen. life. Amen. And for the children, the enemy's yes. trying to destroy our children, but God's coming for the children. Yeah. Yes. Are you ready for this? Yes. There's about to be an encounter. God is real. Yes. Yes, God is real. Is. Yes, yes. Now, all you have to do is lift your hands, lift your hands, mm -hmm. and just say, I receive you. Yes. Now, Jesus, meet them right there where they are. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Banish Satan and his works from their life right now. Receive the peace of God, mm -hmm. and you're going to get a mission. Listen, you've been on fire. You want to see things. And this generation, you know, is like very rebellious. Yeah. We need that in the church. Mm. We needed them to rebel against this current culture. We needed them to rebel mm -hmm. against what we're mm -hmm. seeing happening all across this nation. We need a rebellious spirit for God, yes. Yes. not against God. Amen. That's right. Yes. We do, we do, and it's coming. We are out of time, but I want you to know that God is for you. He is not against you. He has a plan for your life. But you have to also realize that there is an enemy and he doesn't want you to live out that plan. And some of you know very clearly there has been a force that has been keeping you from your purpose. So if you prayed that prayer, if you said, God, I need you, then we do want you to call and share that and share with someone else that's in the room. Share with your husband, share with your wife. Say, you know what? I prayed that prayer. I'm giving Jesus a chance because you know what? He will give you supernatural weapons to be more than conquerors. And you get that from having a personal relationship with him. So if you're watching today and uh, you have, again, you felt the enemy's attacks in your life, but you want to walk in God's plan and purpose, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We'd love to pray with you, encourage you today, and just let you know that you are not alone. I do want to thank Alan for joining us today. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Armed for Victory. It's available now, and for more, you can visit him online at EncounterToday.com. Let us know. If you've been blessed by the program today, you can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Some of you, you really do feel like you're surrounded by a cloud. But I'm telling you, when you say the name of Jesus, it's going to dispel. Yes. And the light of God's going to come into your life in a supernatural way. He's going to send people across your path that you're going to be amazed. Like within the next few days, you'll be saying, okay, that's what that lady said on TV was gonna happen. But God is going to begin to move in your life in a supernatural way. I really do believe that. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Alan, and thank you, ladies. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.